If you're subscribed to this channel, there's a decent chance that you already know who One Million Moms are, if not by name, then by deed. They are, for example, the people who decided to protest a transgender model who wasn't actually transgender. Yeah. Essentially, One Million Moms is a family group that hides behind religion to support its own bigotry, and it spends a lot of time targeting minorities, especially LGBT individuals, which is where the modeling thing came in. I mostly know about them, for example, because they protested Archie Comics for having a same-sex wedding, I guess, and J.C. Penney's for having, I think it was Ellen DeGeneres. You can tell how much I care about these specific instances by just how firmly ingrained they are in my head. But at the same time, that's actually kind of the point here, because... I don't really care about Archie Comics, and I don't know the last time I shopped in a JCPenney's. I was probably eight years old and brought there by my parents. The thing is that I wouldn't even know about these issues if not for the valiant efforts of One Million Moms. Um, more recently, issues that do sort of interest me have come up. Highlights for Children has drawn their ire for having same-sex parents in their publication, apparently. Uh, more recently, they're going after National Geographic because they have a uh, trans kid on the cover. Supposedly, they're targeting, you know, the most vulnerable people by, like, allowing trans kids to actually be trans rather than abusing them. About the closest I've come to either of those publications in the last, I don't know, 25, 30 years is that they're both stocked in my optometrist's waiting room so that technically I could read them if I wanted to, but, you know, I don't. So the thing is that the only reason that I heard about this, the only reason that my friends know about these issues is because One Million Moms decided to make a big fuss about it. And that's pretty much why this video is a thing, because without One Million Moms, I wouldn't know about these issues, and none of my friends would, and we probably wouldn't care, and now a bunch of my friends have already started subscribing to both Highlights, which is funny because none of them have kids, and National Geographic. I'm sort of interested too, not even as a screw you to One Million Moms or social conservatives or Christians or whatever group you want to tie them to, but out of legit support for what they're doing because what they're doing is good. And although they don't mean to, so are One Million Moms. See, I've followed these people for a couple of years now because of the various controversies that have made the news, and their claimed successes are still pretty few and far between, but most of them are dubious or just plain lame. Their real successes in terms of actually getting sponsorships dropped or getting shows canceled or their successful boycotts are extremely few and far between. But what they have done over the last couple of years is they've drawn attention to these causes. And the people who seem to be paying the most attention aren't one million moms. They're not the quote-unquote family or Christian or conservative groups. They're the supporters of minority groups. They're the LGBT community. They're black people, women, basically exactly the opposite of what One Million Moms wants to have happen. And if you want to know why I'm really not concerned about One Million Moms, it's simple. They've spent the last two years trying to get Black Jesus taken off the air, a show I cannot for the life of me figure out why it's even airing still anyway, and they have failed so hard that it's already announced for a third season apparently. I think there's a powerful lesson in this, because I am sure that One Million Moms thinks that they're fighting the gay menace, the trans menace. They're sticking it to this inclusiveness by showing how powerful family values are. And yet, in reality, they seem to do nothing but strengthen the visibility of LGBT individuals. And, you know, anyone else who they happen to target. I just mostly come across them going after LGBT issues because they come across my feed and my friends hear about them for some reason. But the thing about this topic is I'm sort of repeating myself. See, somewhere in the ballpark of a year ago, I did a video called the 
Frozen Effect, and then I did a video called The Real Sarkeesian Effect, both of which had the same sort of argument to them, that people in the attempt to shoot something down ended up amplifying something. The interesting thing about this is that um, basically at that point I was like, I got positive comments from a couple of people. We'll get back to that in a moment. And mostly negative comments from the people who hate Anita Sarkeesian. The reason that I feel like repeating myself is because, well, you fast forward a year and you basically see the same behavior from the other side. Okay, so there is a certain anti-feminist who started showing up in my subscription feed all the time because um, a group of feminists decided that they were going to take him down. And the end result of that was um, that he got an influx of views and an influx of subscribers, and he ended up doing a video thanking these people for their efforts. The funny thing to me is how the sides flip, because I watched the anti-feminist do a victory lap while the feminists got all uh, upset and even yelled at their own for calling him out, because um, apparently I was one of their own right up until the point that I started saying that this shit was stupid. And since some of those people were subscribed to me and actually commented on my video regarding how this was a bad step for the quote-unquote anti-feminist to have taken, then it seems like I didn't really get my message across because when they turned around and did it themselves, they got all super indignant. What really drove this home for me, though, is the media. That media that is suddenly baffled that Donald Trump got to be president. How could this possibly have happened, says the people who propped him up for the last year, who repeated his every ridiculous, fanciful claim ad nauseum, who basically gave him free promotion for ages, can't figure out how he became president. And I'm not saying it's all their fault, I mean, a quick look at YouTube will tell you just how popular white supremacy is, even among the supposed social justice warriors and feminists, but they certainly played a part, and they're completely oblivious to it. And don't you dare even suggest it, because media pundits will get very indignant at the idea that they had a hand in it. Just like Gamergate can't figure out why people keep talking about Anita Sarkeesian and Zoe Quinn after they made them household names just like feminists can't understand why certain anti-feminists are suddenly getting an influx of viewers. And just like I bet that One Million Moms is comprised of a lot of people who are surprised that LGBT rights aren't going away, that same-sex marriage and LGBT representation in the media haven't died out by now, you know. We're the good guys. We're crusading for the right thing. Why isn't it working? Because you're basically giving publicity to the enemy. I started recording this on December 30th, and... Part of the reason that it took me so long to do this is simply a stressful period of time in my life because the holidays are always stressful for me. But the other part is because I know this is a video that's going to pretty much please nobody. But the team that I'm supposed to be a part of, apparently, just scored a massive home goal at a critical moment and they started celebrating and got pissed off when I didn't thing is, I'm not particularly interested in sides, per se, and really, nobody who claims to be a quote-unquote feminist or social justice advocate or LGBT advocate should be either, because at the end of the day, there are human beings involved in these issues. I happen to be one of them, which is one of the reasons that I take this shit personally. And if at the end of the day what you look at is whether or not people have towed your line or whether or not your team looks good, then you're probably not helping people at all, at least not the people you care about. You might be helping some Patreon accounts, but probably not the women or the LGBT people or the people of color or whoever else it is you claim you're championing while you try and score the most goals. So, yeah. Happy New Year, everyone. Amaranth out.